Okay, welcome to another uh, marathon on uh, A-level math. Today's topic is uh, numerical solutions to equations. You must have seen the recorded lecture videos. This is a follow-up with questions so that we can filter out whatever parts we don't understand. Um, for the on-screen version of the calculator, uh, watch the earlier videos and you should know how we deal with the iterative process. Uh, by sketching a suitable pair of graphs, show that the equation this, uh, where x is in radians, has a root in the interval 0 to pi over 2. So when I'm drawing um, the graph from 0 to pi over 2 of cosec, so you must also have seen that in the video earlier that the graph of cos x has um, an asymptote at, 90 de uh, at 180 degrees. The question is just up to 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I know that sine 90 is 1. Therefore, cosec 90 should also be 1. And the line should look something like this. And the graph should look something like this. OK. Then I need to draw by sketching a suitable pair of graphs. So I'm drawing cosec x. And the other graph that I'll draw is half x plus 1 and show you that the intersection point has one root in the interval. So how do I draw the graph half x plus 1? I'm going to say that one of the points that I'm going to draw is the same one, that is the y-intercept. When I need the other point, I'm going to use the end point of the boundary. So what I've done is I first use 0 to find out the y-intercept. And then I'm going to use pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. Uh, plus 1. So this gives me pi over 4. I'm using my calculator to get to my final answer. Plus 1. That gives me 1.79. Okay, so that's about 2. So 1.79 should come up here. And I'm going to draw this line and say that there is one root in the interval. One root. Okay. So that was part one. Part two says verify by calculation. So whenever you're doing this question, you have to bring everything to one side and create a function. So I'm going to bring everything to one side and say cos x minus half x minus one equals to zero and f of x equals to cos x minus half x minus one. Cos x, I, I have to uh, verify that it's between 0.5 and 1. So I'm going to first put in 0.5 and then 1. Of course, I could, can't put in cos x on the calculator. I'm going to put in 1 over sin x. My calculator should be in radians. So I get 0 0.836. Minus 0 0.312. So change of sign indicates root. Then part 3 says show that this root also satisfies the equation. So what I need to show you is that this is the same as that equation. So that the roots are the same. Um, I think I can do that easily by saying that cos x equals to half x plus 1 and what do I need to prove I need to prove that it's sine inverse so I know that I will need sine x on this side let's take an LCM and say that this becomes x plus 2 so sine x when I reciprocate I get sine x equals to 2 over x plus 2 I basically exchange the sides numerators and denominators and that should give me sine inverse of 2 over sorry x equals 2 sine inverse of 2 over x plus 2. Okay, then use the iterative process. I am going to take the midpoint of my interval as a starting value and say that 0.75 is my starting. Now this process is on a calculator. I'm doing that for the first question to show just to show you what is happening and that should be enough for this uh, topic. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to type in 0 0.75. Let's see if my calculator is in radians. It's not. Let's convert that first. Okay. Then I'm going to type 0.75 plus n equals to. And now I'm going to convert shift sine inverse. That's the expression that I have. I'm going to try 
to write everything on the expression and whenever I'm writing X I'm going to write on cell instead and that will give me um, the expression that I want so X2 comes out as point zero eight one it says uh, give the result of each iteration correct to four decimal places and this root to correct to two decimal places. So also told you what the starting value is. Okay, eight one four three. Even if we hadn't, um, I would take the midpoint of the interval. So point eight one. I press another equals to that changes the number. It uses the previous answer seven nine zero four. So that's point seven nine. Then I press another equals to it gives me point seven nine nine. One that's point eight zero. Then I press another x5 0.7959 and that's also 0 0.80. So there is a repetition. I know that the next one will also be 0 0.80. So therefore 0 0.80 is the root. The sequence has converged to 2.80. Okay. Okay. That was the first question. Question 2 says why sketching a suitable pair of graphs? So I know that I need to sketch the graph of two cortex and 1 plus ex e power x where x is in radians has only one root in the interval this okay so let's quickly draw the sketch so the graph of cortex will be as we've seen before in uh, our lecture videos it's going to be the reciprocal of tan x um, in the interval 0 to pi over 2 okay so the typical graph of cortex goes like that and then goes like that but in this case i have to stop at 90 now this 2 honestly doesn't make a difference every value gets multiplied by 2 but the 0 multiplying by 2 get uh, stays at 0 the curve just stretches a little bit and it's going to infinity so it won't really matter and i can just go on and label it 2 cortex okay um, it's just that the value at 45 would no longer be at 1, it's going to be at 2, but it's not something that you need to worry about on the exam. Then, y equals to cot x, y equals to 1 plus e x. Now, a typical e power x graph passes from 1 and goes up like that. Okay, the graph for 1 plus e x will, of course, be higher, it's going to be at 2. So, I'm going to mark that at 2. And say that I need to still find out the end point. So I'm going to say that what is 1 plus e power pi over 2? e power pi over 2, 1 plus answer. That's nearly 5.18. Okay, so I am at C45. So the graph of this would look like oh, something like this. So that's 1 plus e power x. Of course, I don't need the graph be behind the x-axis or y-axis. So I can just erase that part and say that this is what my final graph should look like. Okay. Even if you leave out a little bit, it doesn't matter. Okay. Verify by calculation that this root lies between 0 0.5 and 1. So this is again the same question. I bring everything to one side and say that 2 part x minus 1 minus ex equals to 0. I've created a function and the function is 2 part x minus part x minus 1 minus e power x. I'm going to test between 0 0.5 and 1 again. Okay. So I will put it on my calculator and say 2 over tan x 0.5 minus 1 minus e power 0 0.5 1.012. Minus 2.43. Change of sign indicates root. Okay. Show that this root also satisfies this equation. I think that is also simple. I can just quickly do that. So 2 over 1 plus e power x equals to tan x. 
and that's tan inverse. Okay, and then it says use the iterative formula with x1 equals to 0 0.7. I think that's reasonably easy for everyone, and I'm not going to attempt that. Um, I think the iterative process is has been explained several times. Okay, the diagram shows a curved rod AB of length. Um, if you if in a particular question the iterative process isn't working for you, you can ask in the comments and I can respond to you on an individual basis. The diagram shows a curved rod AB of length 100 centimeters, which forms an arc of a circle. The endpoints A and B of the rod are 99 centimeters apart. The circle has radius R and the arc AB substance an angle of two alpha radians at O, the center of the circle. Show that alpha satisfies the equation this okay now curved rod okay um so this doesn't say where i have to start off with the question so i will have to improvise a little and think about this is the arc length can i come up with the formula for the arc length it's it's basically r into 2 alpha equals to 100 so r alpha should equal about 50 okay let's see if we can use that uh, that's the arc length and then it says that a and b are 99 centimeters apart and i need to use uh sin x okay so how do i end up using sin x can i say that basically if i were to split this and say that i have this angle alpha this would split into 45 44.5 and then sine alpha Should be equals to 45.5 over r and then r is 50 over alpha so i can say that sine alpha 44.5 50 over alpha 44.5 multiplied by alpha divided by 50 44.5 over 50 is basically 99 over 100 and I have an equation in alpha that resembles the equation in the question Okay, and that should work. I have made the proof. I can replace x alpha with x and I have my answer there Then given that this root uh, equation has exactly one root in the interval okay um so that's easy i bring everything to one side and say that i create a function that should balance uh let me write this at 0.99x it's easier to write it that way uh it has an interval between 0.1 and 0 0.5 0 0.99 into 0.1 minus sine of 0.1 that gives me a very small minus 8.33 into 10 power minus 4 and f of 0 0.5 0 0.01557 so change of sign indicates root okay Show that if the sequence of values given by the iterative formula this converges, then it converges to the root of equation in part one. So what I'm basically asking you to do is to um, show that the sequence converges to the same alpha. So what I'm going to say is that uh, remove the subscripts and try to come up with the same expression that is there above and see if it matches. So that's going to be 49.5x when I bring it to this side, 48.5 plus 1, 50 sine x, and see it gets me the same answer. Okay, so I've proved to you that these two equations are the same and the iterative formula will converge to the same value that the earlier value is converging. Uh, then the iteration is simple, x1 is basically uh, 2.25 that's what the question is telling you now when you're putting it on your calculator remember that what you're going to do is uh, you are going to 
write 0.25 equals to and then when you're writing for x2 you're going to say that this is uh, 50 sine answer minus 48.5 into answer as well because there are two x's okay so this gives me 0 0.24 uh it says i need to show the result of each iteration and correct to three decimal places i'm just going to show an extra decimal place and say that this is 0 0.245 0 0.2453 that's also 2.245 okay that should be my final answer okay going to the next question it says uh Given that x cos x equals to 0.5, uh, where it satisfies the equation. So, uh, four marks. So, this is integration by parts. This iteration question can have any of these questions. This one is integration by parts. So, I'm going to say that um, I will apply I late. I have algebraic and I have trigonometric. So, u is equals to x and v dash equals to cos x uh, v is therefore equals to sin x and u dash is 1 so v u minus v u dash and this always uh, this is equals to 0.5 and i apply the limits okay so i have uh, x cos x no, sorry x sin x minus sin x into 1 so the integral of sin x is basically minus cos x and I have the limits 0 0.5 so I have a as upper limit so a sin a plus cos a that's the upper limit the lower limit is 0 that gives me 0 plus cos of 0 is 1 so I have to be careful about that so a sin a plus cos a minus 1 equals to 0.5 that gives me a sin a plus cos a equals to 1.5 and I have a sin a 1.5 minus cos a and I have sin a then equals to 1.5 minus cos a over a that's part one verify by calculation that a is greater than one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring everything to one side and say that this is what i have okay there's a minus outside so f of a is sine a minus 1.5 minus cos a over a okay so i have to prove that it is greater than one so i'll have to take an interval myself i'm going to say that let's try f of one first and i get sine one minus 1.5 minus cos one over one so that gives me a negative answer minus 0.118 i need a number reasonably far away so i'm going to say 1.5 and also say 1.2 or 1.3 and see where there's a change in sign if i don't see a change in sign i'm going to have to change the number okay okay so there's a 1.5 that gives me a change in sign so i know that after one there's a change in sign so change of sign indicates root in this case in this case the root is between zero and oh sorry one and 1.5 okay 
question four the last part is just using the iterative formula i think we've done enough of that let's go on to question number five it says in the diagram abcd is a rectangle uh with a b equals to 3a and a d equals to a a circular arc with center a and radius r joins m and n on a b and c d respectively the angle m a n is x radians the perimeter of the sector a m n perimeter of a m n is equals to half the perimeter of the rectangle okay that's something that i know show that x satisfies this equation so i'm going to probably have to use this relationship and then try to justify it so basically this is also r and can i find out arc length and say that this should be equals to rx so perimeter of amn should equal r plus r plus rx okay then when we are talking about the perimeter of the rectangle this side is of course 3a and this side is a so i need half 3a plus 3a plus a plus a so i have 2r plus rx equals to half 8a that's 4a so 2r plus rx equals to 4a now notice that in the question i just need the x i don't need r's i don't need a's so what do i do i start thinking what i can do in this question to replace a first how can i replace a with something in x okay so the relationship that i find is that if this was also a then i could say that the hypotenuse r and the uh, perpendicular is a i would get sine x equals to a over r so a would be r sine x let's see if that helps 2r plus rx r sine x Does that help yes i have an r common on both sides then okay and that helps me solve my problem so i get 2 plus x over 4 equals to sine x yes that is the proof indeed the next part is about iteration i hope everybody can do that Okay, going on to question six, which is sketching a suitable pair of graphs has only one root. Okay, so this is about the graph. Ln x is a simple graph that goes from one and goes like that. Okay, then two minus x starts at two. Okay, and it's going to have so this is the graph two minus x and this is the graph ln x okay so 2 minus x will also have an x intercept at 2 so this line is going to look something like this i've calculated the x intercept by keeping y as 0 so i have this at 2 and i can show you that there is one intersection slash root again verifying that this root is lies between 1.4 and 1.7 so i make move everything to one side and create a function So 1.4 and 1.7. Use my calculator quickly to show you the change in sign. 1.4. Getting 0.2635 minus 0.231. Then show that this root also has this, um, also satisfies this equation. Okay, so I can either come from here to here, or I can also do the other way around. I think doing the other way around is easier so 3x equals to 4 plus x minus 2 ln x 3x minus x equals to 4 minus 2 ln x 2x equals to 4 minus 2 ln x okay so that's the first equation itself 
I can factor out a 2 and say that this is 2 minus x. Okay. Question 7 is again about integration by parts. Let's do that quickly. Okay, the next part was iterations. They've given you the starting value, so you can do that. Question 7. Um, so ln x over x square. So I have ln x and x power minus 2. I have i late and I have a logarithmic and an algebraic. So the logarithmic is going to be my u and my v dash is x power minus 2. v is therefore x power minus 2 plus 1 divided by minus 1 vu minus vu dash and uh, vu so that's minus 1 over x into ln x minus minus 1 over x into 1 over x okay minus ln x over x plus 1 over x square i integrate that again And I know that when I apply the limits from 0 to 1 to a, the answer should be 2 over 5. So I get minus ln a over a minus 1 over a upper limit minus ln 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1. So I get minus ln a over a. You can add this as a common denominator. Um, and this becomes a plus 1 equals to 2 over 5. Um, if I bring that to the other side, what do I need? I need 5 over 3, so I'll have to subtract this. Can I factor out a minus from here? And take this to the other side and say 2 over 5 minus 1. That's minus 3 over 5 minus ln a plus 1 over a. The negatives cancel out. And I get 5 over 3 ln a plus 1 equals to a. I've switched the sides and I've taken a reciprocal. And I've shown to you. Okay, then it says use an iterative based formula. Find the value of alpha character. Use an initial value of 4. So you start with x1 equals to 4. Okay, this is I think somewhere there in the lectures already. And I'm going to skip over that and take you to question number nine. It says the diagram shows a semicircle with center O, radius R, and diameter AB. The point B on the circumference is such that the area of the minor segment on AP is equals to half the area of the minor segment on BP. Okay, so I have a relationship. Okay, the angle AOP is X radians. Show that X satisfies this equation. So area of AP is half of the area of BP. So area of AP is basically half the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle. So half R square theta minus area of the triangle. Half R into R into sine of X. Half AB sine C. Then there's another half and area of bp then is half this angle is pi minus x so r square into pi minus x minus the area of the triangle so half r square sine pi minus x okay so what I see from this question is that first of all I have an uh, half r squared common so I have x minus sine x here there is a half already outside there is another half that I could take out as common and r squared so I get pi minus x minus sine pi minus x okay so cancelling out some things 
So that it makes it easier. R square cancels out with R square. And this 2 goes on and multiplies here. So 2x minus sine x equals to pi minus x minus sine pi minus x. Okay. Um, then I see that there's 3x. Uh, if I bring this x to the other side. And what I see is there's a compound angle. Um, like a compound angle is basically... Now, you could go on and solve this in the usual way that you do in trigonometry and say that this is sine pi cos x minus cos x cos pi sine x. Okay. Or if you remember from O levels, they study something called uh, trigonometry of some supplementary angles, and you say that sine 90 minus x is basically equals to sine x. So you could just replace it with sine x, and that's what it's going to become at the end of the day because sine pi is 0, so this vanishes, and cos pi is basically negative 1. So I get sine x from inside the bracket, and then it comes out as minus sine x. So I have Okay, I added this x up, so this x has to go. There is a sine x on the other side, so this is 3x minus sine x, and this is then pi minus sine x. Okay, so I'm going to write that again. Uh, this is 2 sine x, my bad. This was cross multiplied, so it was 2 sine x. So that's 2 sine x. Okay, then going back and looking at, I want pi plus sine x, so I'm going to say that this becomes 3x equals to pi minus sine x plus 2 sine x. So 3x equals to pi plus sine x. x equals to 1 third pi plus sine x. And that's the proof. Then it says verify by calculation that x lies between 1 and 1.5, so you bring everything to one side. I think that question has been done uh, so many times now. I think you're used to it. Um, and then put in 1 and 1.5 and then show a change in sign. Then it says use an iterative formula in part 1 to determine x correct to 3 decimal places. Give the result of each iteration to 5 decimal places. You must be wondering what x1 is. Um, there's no interval given, but you can obviously see that this x is basically somewhere between 0 and 90, if I were to point that out to you. So you could take any value between 0 between zero and pi over 2. Technically, you should just take pi over 4, which is 3.142 divided by 4, and that should be 3.142 divided by 4. 7855. And that should work. And then this is the equation. This has... One real root, find the two consecutive integers between which the root lies. This is an old question when um, the calculators went as advanced as we have them right now. So, although you know, what you could simply do is you could put this on a calculator, find out the actual root. Okay, you could say that, for example, if I were to show you my, my calculator, I would go to the cubic equation part and say that I want to solve. Uh, can't see the equation yeah here it is equals to the polynomial I select a degree of 3 and I say that I want to solve 1 I don't have an x square I have an x and I have minus 13 so I'm getting 3.433 so I could just um, go on and say find two consecutive integers so those two consecutive integers could be f of 3 I'm going to do 3 q minus 8 times 3 minus 13 and f of 4. What the question expects you to do is do a bit of trial and error and then come up with this answer. But since this is an old question, it assumes that the calculators went as advanced as they are right now. Okay. So even if you don't have this calculator, you could just plug in 3 and 4 or you know just start with 1, 2, and then 2 and 3 and 3 and 4 and so on. And you'll probably find a change in sign in one of them. Okay, then it says uh, use the iterative formula, so you could use x1 as 3.5 then. That brings us to the end of the first worksheet. 
and i hope this was productive uh, please make sure to like and subscribe and comment if you have questions thank you